How many of us can say that we get the most out of our relationships? Where we don't allow fear, conflict, or the lack of skills to keep us from developing quality relationships. As mentioned, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. And usually when I tell people that, there are two questions I get. First, people say, are you going to analyze me and make me cry? <laughs> and I say, no. <laughs> That's not how it works. I'm not that intrusive. So later on, please feel free to come talk to me. You're safe. I won't do that to you. And second, people ask me, well, if you're a relationship expert, how's your relationship? So I tell them what my wife has told me to tell them, we're good. <laughs> but in all honesty, we have ups and downs just like other couples. We have difficult moments and good moments. We have fun and challenges just like other couples. But the difference between our relationship and other relationships is that we practice a set of skills that allow us to maximize our good times and minimize our bad times. These skills we use so much so that we've been able to cultivate a good and great relationship together. We not only use this, these skills in our relationship, but we use these skills in other situations, with our friends, family member, coworkers. In all areas of our life, we use these skills. Today, I'm here to tell you how you can use these skills to create a change reaction. These skills I call the befores. The befores are ways that you can, you, you can use these skills to impact your relationships before you can get to the place of uh, impact and change. These skills are so instrumental that, that you can not only change yourself, but you will ignite change in other people. So I started to talk about relationships. Let me just give you how I define relationships. Relationships involves, ideally, your ability to connect with someone else, whether that's a friend, a roommate, uh, a business partner, or a romantic partner. And it means being able to connect with someone that will inspire you, motivate you, and get you to the place where they see and encourage growth in you. I remember when I was an undergraduate student here at Villanova, I had a great opportunity of coming in, and I was excited. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I had my whole plan mapped out. I wanted to become a medical doctor. I, 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 had, I knew what it was and how I was going to get there. I started off by majoring in biology. But after the talk today, maybe I should have done engineering, right? <laughs> but I started off biology. And by the, my sophomore year, I got to the place of wondering, well, is this really where I want to go? I wasn't as sure as, I, as when I started. I was confused. I saw some of my other classmates bail and go to other majors, and I was like, should I do that? Then I saw other classmates that stuck it out and endured the pain, or at least it felt like pain to me. And I got to this place where I wasn't sure what to do. But the moment that changed my life was my advisor and professor. He took time out to, to talk with me about the options, to figure out what I need to do and how I should do it. He said that he saw value in me and that this was the important part, that if I decided to change and shift my major, it wouldn't mean that I was a failure. Now, I could go through all types of psychological jargon of why I thought that was failure, but at that moment, it meant changing my life plan, my game plan that I had since I was five years old. I was telling my parents I wanted to be a medical doctor, and now, change? It was difficult, but this relationship gave me the strength and the courage to shift. I shifted from biology and went on to psychology to learn more about that field. I then went and learned uh, and became a licensed and marriage family therapist. I worked with countless couples. I've been able to speak and do much more. What's been so important was that this allowed me to get to the place where I felt I belonged, the place, the path that I should have been on from the very beginning. But in addition to that, I I've been able to ignite change not only in myself, but in other people. See, the thing about relationships, it, it creates the ability for you to change yourself and to change others. But I've been using this word change as if my definition is the same as yours. So let me tell you how I define change. Change is the ability to shift from ordinary to extraordinary, from mediocre to self-actualized. All right, I couldn't help it. Somehow Maslow got into my TED talk, right? <laughs> I said I, was go I wasn't going to do it, but he snuck in here, right? Right? When we talk about hierarchy of needs and being self-actualized, that's how I see change. Right? But not only that, change is being able to live your best self, to see that in yourself and in others. One of the greatest change agents that we know is Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. 
We know how he's been able to, that how he was able to influence many people throughout his life. But what we don't talk about are two people that really influenced him, Howard Thurman and Mahatma Gandhi. Howard Thurman was a theologian, civil rights leader, and a mentor to Dr. King. He actually did missionary work that led him to, to talk and meet with Mahatma Gandhi. Dr. King, later in his life, went to go visit the birthplace of Mahatma Gandhi. And when he was there, this trip ignited a change in him that deepened his understanding of, of the nonviolence resistance and his commitment to the civil rights movement. You know, as much as we know of Dr. King, imagine who he would have become, or maybe who he wouldn't have become, if it wasn't for this relationship. These two men were instrumental into, into his life and how he was able to grow and become the change agent that we know. The thing is that what I'm saying is that change happens through relationships. The relationships we foster allow us to build and to grow and to ignite change in ourselves and in others. But before I can go into talking about the steps that I've talked about, my B4s, let me just talk about choosing a relationship. You choose a relationship with someone who can offer you something, someone that can add value to your life. And hopefully, you add value to their life as well. You know, I once worked with a student who wanted to become a lawyer. She was smart, intelligent, uh, had a plan, and actually had an opportunity to, to do an internship at a law firm. But she was shy and quiet. And while she was there, she didn't really reach out to a lot of people or have conversations with people. And as she continued, she realized, I'm missing out on something. I need to do more. And then she started to have more conversations, learn more about the field. She even shadowed some lawyers and made her advisor her mentor. She saw value in this other person and realized that if I don't do more, I might miss out on an opportunity to grow and to change. This connection, her mentor allowed her to be greater and to know more about the profession and to go on and to do it. So I've talked about this, and I've told you about my steps, and let me get into my B4s. My B4s are four steps that if you take these, it will help you to develop a quality relationship that will help you to get the most out of your relationship. First one is build a foundation. You know, when I was at Villanova, I had the opportunity in my junior and senior years to go on a Habitat for Humanity trip. It was a great life-changing experience for me, and my first year, W the house that we were, build, uh, we were building was from the very beginning. It was the foundation of the house. I saw holes were already dug, uh, pipes were laid. There was even a framework being built up for the house. And as I learned more, they said, well, we're doing this in a certain way so that if there's a natural disaster, if there's a hurricane, or if there's a flood or something, the house will still remain. We're the same way, that if we don't build a strong foundation in our relationships, when the tough times come, and they will come, no matter what type of relationship, it is easy for that relationship to falter or to be lost. But if we build that relationship and that foundation, now we're able to grow. And the way you do that is through having things in common, uh, by sharing, um, uh, sharing different experiences. You know those inside jokes that only you and the person you're connected to know, but nobody else knows, you get to laugh? That's a shared experience. The other way you do that is by recognizing the value in someone else. When you recognize that value, then you're able to have that connection. So no matter what happens, if you have a misunderstanding, if you have a difficult moment, you, that foundation allows you to build a strong relationship. Two, be vulnerable. Now, it's easy to say to be vulnerable, but it's so hard to do. Being vulnerable means that you are willing to share your dreams that you've kept secret that you're willing to discuss yourself in a way that you are afraid to do, but you know you need to do it. It's also, it also means being willing to share uh, and take the emotional risk to trust someone. When I was in grad school, my supervisor told me that uh, uh, she wanted to talk to me. Of course, I thought she was going to make me cry, because it was the first time I was learning how to work with, uh, with, as a therapist. But I said, all right, go ahead, tell me. Or what, what, she said, what's wrong with you? She asked me, do you know what's wrong with you? And I said, no, go ahead, tell me. She then said, your problem is you don't know how to ask for help. And I'm like, yes, I do. I ask for help all the time. But the, problem, well, the issue was I did ask for help, but in the small ways. I didn't really ask for help in major ways because I didn't want to be vulnerable. I didn't want to admit that I couldn't do it on my own. I wanted to fix everything, and if I couldn't do it, 
That meant it wasn't going to happen. So I took some time and I thought about it and I realized I need to make a change. And when I made that change, I started to experience life in a whole different way. I was able to accomplish more of my goals. I was able to do things I wanted to do, all because of connection to other people and the ability of making myself more vulnerable, making myself open to the experience of somebody else. Three, better your communication. We've heard that communication is the center of all relationships, and it is true. Communication is just on a simple level is the sending of mes messages and receiving of messages. But oftentimes, we don't necessarily do that in a way that helps our relationships. John Gottman, who's known for doing research on couples, um, has came, uh, came up with one of his, in his research, uh, found out that couples uh, find a, a good relationship is usually five to one ratio, meaning that if you have five positive interactions to one negative interaction, they have a good and successful relationship. Now, we can apply this to just about any relationship. Our friendships, our romantic relationships, a business partnership. If we have good, positive experiences, that allows us to also be better in our relationships. But the way you do this is through communication. When you communicate your dreams, your fears, your desires, your goals, what you like and what you don't like, this helps you to have positive interactions versus negative interactions. Four, bring value to your relationship. You know, they're often, it's good to be in a relationship, but it's even better to value the relationship you're in. How many of us know someone, maybe a friend or a relative, that stops speaking to someone they are connected to, their romantic partner, business partner, over a misunderstanding? I know plenty of people who have done that. You know, I was watching a uh, Cosby episode, and, you know, let me be honest, my wife thinks you can learn all life lessons through the Cosbys. And so we have all eight DVD sets, and uh, we end up watching a lot of episodes. And on this one episode, uh, there was these two friends who now became enemies over a fender bender. They thought that the problem was the other person. And if that other person apologized, everything would be great. Well, no one apologized. And so they got upset, and then they got bitter. And now they stopped talking to each other. Years went by, and now their children decided to get married. This was an opportunity where they could have resolved their issue, but they didn't. They then went on a few more years, and now their children, who were now married, were about to have a child, their grandchild. This was the moment that brought them back together to say, let's give this another chance. They started to talk to each other, and what they realized it was a misunderstanding that got them to the place where they were now not connected. When they look back, they realize they lost 30 years of relationship, 30 years of friendship they lost over a misunderstanding. When you value your relationship, you're willing to admit that you're wrong. You're willing to do what it takes to get to the place where you don't lose that connection, that relationship, that friendship. You value it in such a way you invest the time into it. So those are my befores, right, where one, you build a foundation, two, you, you be vulnerable, three, better your communication, and four, you bring value to the relationship. And once again, these things, if you use them, will help you to build a stronger, better relationship that you will get the most out of it. And you will see change in yourself. But it's not just good enough to see change in yourself. It is important that not only do you see change in yourself, but you ignite that change in other people. That what you do and how you evolve can also impact the people you're connected to. In essence, change is systemic. That igniting change not only happens with you, but through a system with other people. Let me give you two examples. One, let's look at a clock. The way a clock works is that each part is connected to another part that as one part moves, it allows the other part to move. And that if it's working correctly, you get correct time. If it's not, well, maybe you're late, right? Because they're not working in the way it should. Put these things together, it works as a system, and everything works together. Well, that's how we are. We work as a system. As I change, you change. As I grow, you grow. And so if I, as I empower and get better as a person, I ignite change in you and vice versa. The second part I want you to think about is the work that I do. I work with couples, and they could be going through many difficulties. But one in particular is an affair. 
And with dealing with an affair, sometimes there's anger, unresolved conflict, and just turmoil. But they start to work, and they start to realize what their issues might have been, and they decide to make some changes. They fall back in love, and they practice some skills. And at the end of this, they get to the place of recognizing, you know, we are better now than we've ever been because we're doing things to make ourselves better. And they see that in their household because now their kids maybe function a little bit better because of the change in them. They see this at their jobs or in other places in their lives. As they change and develop a stronger relationship, other parts of their life now change. The point is, you have the power to ignite change in other people. What you do can change not only the people in this room, but the people outside of this room. How you evolve and the skills that you use to develop quality relationships allow you to be at your best. So I want you to think about these four things once again. Build the foundation, be vulnerable, better your communication, and bring value to your relationship. If you do these things, you will ignite a change reaction. I want you to get to the place where you become the change that ignites change in others. Thank you.